Hey guys, Crixley here for the Red Carpet Report and we are here at the 38th Annual Saturn Awards. Let's get to it, shall we? Okay. Um, I have a question for you. You are known for doing workshops like drama workshops and theater acting camps. Because I actually went to the University of Idaho. Did you? In Boise? In Moscow. Oh, in and Moscow. you came, I think you came a couple times when we still had the old Colette and you gave acting workshops. What is it about acting and wanting to teach acting to the next generation that's so important to you? Well, I think it's, it's, it's an art. It's an art form. But in order to work, you need to know your craft. You need to understand all the uh, logistics of, of dissecting a role and performing and all that. And then you need to realize it's a business. So where do you fit? And that's what I tried to do to say we're all, when you all get there, you're all your high school leads or your college you know, whatever you did in school. You're all very good when you get there. So what makes them cast you as opposed to me? Physical, the interview, who are you and what's your type? Once we get to work, you want to show them I can do something else. But you're not going to cast me as a tall Swedish blonde maid, no matter how good I am, until maybe I'm famous and they put me in blonde hair. So you need to know what you're marketing in addition to your talent. And I really think that there's a... Not a formula, but an awful lot of artists are, I don't want to say lazy, that's not the word, but they don't know how to pursue it. And the business end is just as important as the, as the artist end. And I think in order, in any career, it's the same thing. Now, you bring up a good point about the business end and the artist end. Sometimes kids get into acting for the wrong reasons. It's more they want to be famous. It's not about they want, because for me, it's like, I just want to be working. I don't care if I'm famous. So when you get those kids that are like, I just want to be famous, how do you mold them and kind of change their minds without going, no, wrong? Well, see, that's the first thing is if you want to be a star, don't come to me. It, you may up play a scene opposite Tom Cruise and all of a sudden, wow, you are a star. You want to be a working actor. And if you don't want to be a working actor, go somewhere else. Maybe you want to be Picasso, but if you aren't a good enough painter, it's not going to work. You've got to start from the very beginning. It's a craft. It takes a lot of dedication. It takes a lot of hard work. And I think an awful lot of actors are lazy. I'm going to the beach. The agent's going to call me. You have to make it work for yourself. And it's a very difficult thing. You know, it's not easy. And everybody, there's a lot of talented people that aren't working. But it is a business. It's called show business. And you do need to know the business side as well as the artistic side, I think. And now my last question is, how does it feel to know that all these years later, there's still the Ginger Marianne debate? It's amazing, isn't it? And I could have done a million things in my life. We are in 30 languages all over the world. I can't go to Beijing or Rwanda. Everybody says, Ginger Marianne, you know what they're talking about. What a genius Sherwood Schwartz was to produce the sexy girl next door and the sexy sex symbol. I'm greeted with love all over the world. I'm very grateful. There's a lot of other things that I've done acting-wise that I say, hmm, it's given me more of a challenge. But nothing that's made that much of a difference. I'm writing a book, and it's Why Do We Love Marianne? What is it? Why is it? Four generations, three generations said to me, I'm married to Marianne. Because today the 40-year-olds that grew up with me have real issues with their 12-year-old daughters. What's happening? There is no Marianne today. Not that we can cre recreate her, but you can still live with values. And what are those values that we can still live with? I've been very protective of that character because I really do think she's been an influence to both boys and girls, you know? So I, I think there's a message. Well, I gotta tell you, as someone in my 40s and a country girl, I was always Team Marianne, so I thank you so much for stopping to talk with me. Thank you for a wonderful interview. You're a very good questionnaire, too. Thank, thank you so much. You too.